All right, in this scene over here, we're gonna talk about HBV serology, and we're gonna make it really easy. We're gonna begin by taking a look at the structure of HBV, then we're gonna talk about the serology graph, and then we're gonna talk about why there is this dinosaur in the classroom. So let's begin. So again, here we have our HBV virus. Let's take a closer look at it. Here we see hepatitis B virus with its three antigens. On the surface, we see the surface antigen. Floating between the surface and the core, we see the E antigen, and attached to the core, we see the C antigen. Let's explain what each of these antigens is important for. So on the surface, we have again, the surface antigen, S for surface. When a patient is positive for the surface antigen, that usually means that they are actively infected with hepatitis B virus. That's why they have the surface antigen belonging to hepatitis B virus. But it's important to remember that it can also mean that the person was recently vaccinated with hepatitis B virus vaccine. When they give the vaccine, they inject the patient with lots of S antigens. And so the immune system responds by attacking the antigens. Until the S antigen is eradicated, the person may be positive for the S antigen. So if you have a patient who comes in who's S antigen positive, don't think right away that they have hepatitis B virus because they may have recently been vaccinated. Let's talk now about the E antigen, HBE antigen. This again is found between the envelope and the core, and it kind of floats around there, but it actually escapes and exits during replication. That's what E can stand for, exits and escapes. It can also stand for extends, and this is because it extends the infection, meaning that since this antigen rapidly replicates during the acute phase of the infection, it measures the level of infectivity. The higher the level of the E antigen, the more infectious the patient may be. So again, E for escapes, exits, and extends. Then we come up to the C antigen. C for core, since this one is found at the core. As opposed to the S antigen and the E antigen, the C one cannot be detected because it just stays here. It never goes to the blood. It only becomes relevant when we start talking about antibodies, which we'll talk about now. So each of these three antigens over here is associated with different antibodies. The S antigen has S antibodies, the E antigen has E antibodies, and the C antigen has C antibodies. When a person is S antibody positive, that means that their immune system is responding to the S antigen. And again, this could either be because they were actively infected with the virus and now they're fighting it off, or it could mean they got the vaccine. Because again, the vaccine has the surface antigen. So the immune response with the S antibodies. If a person has the E antibodies, that means that they are responding to the E antigen. If the E antigen is gone and we just have E antibody, that means that the person's immune system set off a good response against the virus. When a patient is E antibody positive, that does not indicate vaccination. Because again, vaccination is only relevant to the surface antigen. Now let's talk about the core antibody which again is against the core antigen. This is really important because this helps us distinguish between acute and chronic hepatitis B virus infection. There are two different antibodies that can be directed against the C antigen, the IgM version and the IgG version. IgG tends to come later and lings around for a longer time. So if the patient is positive for the C antibody of the IgM version, that means they have the acute form of the infection. If we test them and they are positive for the IgG version, that means they have a chronic infection. Now we can come back to this graph over here and let's make sense of it. Let's take a look at what happens after infection. The first thing that we can detect is the S antigen and the E antigen. Again, as we mentioned, the C antigen cannot be detected in the blood. We just see the S antigen and the E antigen. These rise and rise and rise until the immune system starts responding by setting off the immune response with antibodies. And this is why the S levels and E levels go down. Now we take a look at this window period over here. This window period means there are lots of antigens and lots of antibodies, and they correlate. They are relatively the same amount, so we can't detect any antigen, and we can't detect any antibody. Because we don't detect a bound antibody, we detect free antibody. Since all the antibody is bound to antigen, we can't detect it. So this is the window period. After the window period, lots more antibodies are produced. So over here we see the S antibodies and the E antibodies, which lasts for years. And again, we see the two forms of the C antibody, IgG version and the IgM version. And again, we see that the IgG version lingers for a lot longer. Now, one more thing before we get to the dinosaur, you may have noticed this value over here, the HBV DNA. What's this all about? There's actually a definitive test of the viral load of the HBV DNA, 
which gives a direct count of the copies of the virus in the blood. This is what we mean by the HPV DNA. Now we measure a person's HPV DNA, which tells us about the viral load. Okay, now let's talk about the dinosaur. Here we see this dinosaur over here, on the surface of the Earth. He's going to represent the surface antigen, and we see that he's actively looking for something, and we see that he's quite active, which reminds us that the surface antigen correlates with active infection. Right under the surface, we see the eggs of the dinosaur. I guess the dinosaur laid some eggs, and now they're replicating. This reminds us that right under the surface, we have the E antigen. Again, these dinosaur eggs is going to represent the E antigen. And the fact that there are eggs reminds us that this antigen correlates with infectivity, since it's associated with replication. And at the core, of course, we have the core antigen, represented by the core of the Earth over here, that has this scary face. It's not real, so we can't detect it. It just hangs out at the core. I like to visualize this scene over here to remind me of the different antigens of hepatitis B virus. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this scene on hepatitis B virus serology. Take care.